All right, and we are live. Good morning, afternoon, and evening, everyone. Thank you for, no for joining another Genesis Mining webinar. We're excited here today to talk with Marco String, as you know, who is the CEO and founder of Genesis Mining. And just to get right to what we're trying to achieve here, the goal is to get questions to the answers that a lot of the customers have. So earlier this week, we sent out an email. A lot of customers have sent us some questions, and now we've gone through, pulled out a lot of the top questions, and now Marco is going to answer them for us. So just to get right to it, Marco, the big question, of course, that everyone wants to understand more is what really happened there with those open-ended contracts? Sure, I think um, it's it's good that we're starting directly um, with uh, with the, probably one of the most important questions that a lot of people uh, wanted to know, uh, and probably a lot of people know, but there's still some uncertainty for for some others. Um, let me start by uh, going back a little bit uh, to explain, I think, the general situation um, where we and also the industry is in right now. Um, towards the the end of last year, we had uh, a phenomenal pool run and a phenomenal. I would, I would, I think the, the term hype is probably uh, appropriate here, and we had so much attention on on cryptocurrencies and blockchain, um, which in the end is a, is a good phenomenon, but that caused, of course, to a lot of a lot of overexcitement and to a lot of um, extreme to really extreme demands, and um, and that. Uh, had uh, the consequence that people went into mining. Uh, so many people went to buy cryptocurrencies, which in the end was good because it drove the price. Uh, but um, also, of course, a lot of people um, uh, went to buy mining machines, build them out at home, but uh, and of course also uh, uh, started mining in the in the cloud. And um, I think this is in general a very good phenomenon. Uh, with this intensity, though. Uh, this brings, of course, uh, an, an, um, an interesting uh, market situation. So what we have seen is that the price of Bitcoin went like uh, from probably uh, somewhere between 5,000 to 20,000, somewhere in a short amount of time. And uh, the other cryptocurrencies were also going up uh, uh, insanely. All the conferences were overcrowded, and uh, there, was ex uh, there was an attention that was never before. Uh, in, the, in the blockchain uh, sector. Um, that went very well. And then after a few months, then we have seen a uh, radical uh, correction of the price, which um, really has uh, uh, put the price down from, I think, where we are now uh, in the, the $6,000 region of Bitcoin, for example, uh, for coming from 20,000 and Ethereum going from 1,200 to um, 200 right now. I think we're uh, slightly below $200. Um, I don't think this is, this is necessarily bad, but of course, this had a quite uh, strong impact on the econ economics of the whole industry. People who bought the cryptocurrencies, they made a significant loss in that, and, um, and the miners had, uh, of course, uh, significantly less return. It's like if you run a, a gold mine, uh, and suddenly gold drops such so much in, in value, then um, your operation, uh, the economics are uh, strongly affected. Um, to to additionally to the drop of the of the underlying uh, to the drop of the cryptocurrencies, um, there was the other component um, which probably everyone is aware of is the difficulty, which reflects how much miners are in, in the market, and uh, particularly. People who decided to go in the market, like end of last year, they it took them for, uh, of course, a long time um, to um, to build all these mining facilities, and they made the decision end of last year, and um, uh, and uh, and it's, this decision stretched, and uh, the, the 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 difficulty grew and grew and grew further and further, even when the price was already going down, because so much uh, people already have. Um, invested and uh, have have basically um, built their uh, or made the decision to to build the, the mining facilities and then have run, ran them up. Um, so the outcome of that was that the prices were heavily uh, uh, were heavily um, dro uh, dropped and uh, the uh, difficulty was going up further. 
So that, of course, squeezed all the, the, the economics of, of, of every miner um, uh, in, in the market. And, uh, and that has, uh, has led to a, a challenging situation um, uh, for, for, uh, for a lot of miners. And um, yeah, and uh, I think um, everybody, um, uh, or in particular when we are talking about uh, the, um, the older generation of, of lifetime contracts, uh, the um, prices to run uh, one terahash um, was uh, 28 uh, cents per terahash per day in, in order to cover all the, the fees. And, um, and this was at one point um, not possible to, uh, to cover from the mining re uh, returns uh, that a terahash is generating. And, um, and that, uh, that has led to the fact that, uh, the, um, that the payouts, first of all, um, were, were zero and um, that uh, we have, of course, we have to say at one point um, that uh, we have, um, at one point we see that the generation is not, not uh, economical anymore uh, due to the market situation. So we have this uh, 60 days uh, grace period and, um, and uh, yeah, and um, uh, there was due to these uh, unfortunate market conditions, there was no um, possibility uh, for the economics uh, to return within this uh, 60 days. Um, so therefore the, uh, the older generation uh, lifetime contracts uh, ended. Um, this, of course, is something that is unfortunate. Um, uh, in the end, we're all in the same boat. Uh, I think we have, uh, and uh, I thank everyone also, of course, for, for their support in this regard. We were able to, uh, to um, offer, uh, once we have seen this uh, going to happen, we started to roll out uh, options uh, and, um, and possibilities for everyone uh, how to proceed. So we uh, started with uh, the option to, uh, to extend uh, an ongoing um, uh, contract by just paying the maintenance fee upfront for a certain amount of time. Um, we did that for originally six months, um, which uh, um, was already challenging because it's not so easy to offer this extension option because there's a lot of uh, things that need to be taken care of running a very large scale mining facility. Um, but uh, we were later very happy that we um, we were even uh, able to offer for everybody who had an older generation um, open-ended or lifetime contract to, um, to just extend for only one month. So basically we gave the option for everyone to just pay the electricity or the maintenance fee, uh, prepay that for one month and, uh, and keep the, the, the contract alive. So, um, uh, so a lot of people have uh, made use of that, and um, they still have that. Have their um, are, and they are still continuing to mine. And uh, some people have um, probably decided, uh, yeah, some people have decided to not do that. Uh, another great uh, additional option that we have um, given to everybody who had an older generation was the option to um, to upgrade to our newest radiant technology for uh, for highly discounted prices. Um, and um, I think this is also a very viable option, uh, and um, I hope we could. Uh, I think we, we could um, help a lot, um, even in a in a challenging market situation. We could uh, help our our miners, our, our customers, and our partners uh, a lot in a situation like that, in order to uh, to overcome and even uh, be in a good position uh, in, in this market. In market, in market. market. Big question, question we're asking is, why could we turn off the machines and then turn them back on when the market corrects again? And that, you know, correction could happen in a month or it could happen in three months or it could happen in three years, but why couldn't you just do that? I would, I would love to do that. I think it's, um, I think that would be uh, amazing if, if that would be possible. I think um, to understand why this is not a very, suitable or not possible at all is because 
you have to see in particularly when we're talking about very large scale mining operations. Um, we're talking about such a scale that just the supply of electricity for, for those large scale operations require power plants, uh, more, uh, one or more. So uh, in order to just say we're now shutting uh, down uh, today and maybe in five days we, 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 uh, we start again, that would mean that from, for the power plant that supplies the, the, the facility uh, or any other um, involved entity, they are unfortunately not that flexible. Um, it's not very simple to just say, okay, for if, if you look into, into power plants, for example, uh, to, to name that, um, it's not, you cannot just say, guys, oh, for all the employees, please take some holiday for a little bit and then we see how we can continue. This is not how large scale businesses usually can operate and there's always a kind of commitment that needs to be done. I think this is not a problem, um, but of course it's it's something that uh, needs to be considered, and um, uh, and that's basically what we what we gave everyone as an option. Um, everyone who wanted to continue to run um, had to give this commitment of originally six months, but that's we, we, we were able to reduce that was uh, uh, just uh, to thirty days in the end. So everybody who wanted to continue to run uh, just had to prepay the electricity for thirty days. And uh, that was appreciated by a lot of um, a lot of our customers. Now, what you guys are talking about a lot, and this was a we probably had two or three hundred questions that came in, you know, asking for more information about this maintenance fee. Like, what is the maintenance fee exactly? What does that consist of? Like, what does that mean? All right. Um, now, of course, this is a very important question, and um, I. I um, uh, I hope I can uh, clarify on that. We have a lot of materials, of course, um, online, and we have a lot of explanations. Our customer support service is also always available to help. Um, uh, long story short, uh, the maintenance is maintenance fee is basically um, summarizing all the operating costs uh, of the uh, of the operations um, in a very simple term, and uh, that. Besides the uh, the cost of electricity, uh, which play of course a major part of that, we also have things like um, of course the, the whole labor uh, that um, that needs to be done, which is on our side quite minimal because we have tools like Genesis Hive and, and others uh, that make it very efficient for us to run the operations. But besides that, we also have uh, cooling. Also on that side, I think we are well placed. We're operating in the Nordics. It's very cold. We can use cold air outside, um, but of course that also costs electricity uh, and, and adds to it. And then of course we have uh, all the costs that we had to consider with regards to security. Um, we have a very high responsibility to all of our customers, um, and um, we, we put uh, security is a very um, important um, uh, important priority for us. And I think it's. I think it shows, for example, that a lot of people are um, like we are. We're really, first of all, very good in basically um, uh, keeping our locations uh, secret. Um, uh, only a few are known. As one of our showcase facilities in Iceland uh, is quite popular in the media, which is fine because it is an older. Um, facility which we can use and only has uh, small uh, production capacities. Uh, but in particularly our new facilities and the majority of other facilities are um, are lucky uh, are, are kept secret and um, and of course uh, to do that is there's some 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 work uh, needed uh, and uh, particularly of course when it really comes to physical security when it really comes to at a, at a concrete facility to make it as, as as secure as possible. If people are aware of it and want to, some people don't have the, uh, all the best intentions um, and try to break in or so, um, then uh, I think we, we, uh, we have done a very good job also in the past to, to secure them. So all these costs adding up, um, that, that is all uh, reflected in 
Is that something that Genesis Mining profits from, or are those just the fixed expenses related to managing the operation? No, this is um, something that um, is, <laughs> uh, this is the costs that we have to, to operate these, um, our, our, the data centers and the given technology. So we had, on the older um, generation, we had a 28 cents uh, per terahash per day cost. And um, I mean, we are very proud. Uh, I don't want to make any, any advertisement here, I mean, but if probably a lot of people are aware that we have launched Radiant, uh, which has a, a, the by far um, most outperforming uh, performance in the market by having a maintenance fee of 0.14 uh, so 14 cents per terahash. That's the half. So um, um, yeah, to say that I, uh, that basically was only able because we put so much effort and also uh, uh, a lot of investment in, investments in research and development in order to really reduce all the costs and, and get the highest um, efficient machines and and all the infrastructure and optimize everything down to really uh, lowering the maintenance fee to such a high. Uh, high degree. And to switch gears here a little bit, Marco, yeah, I know we're going to try to uh, divide this into two parts. So now we're going to move into the second part of this webinar. And what we want to start to cover here is more focused on the cloud mining industry as a whole. And then, of course, there are a lot of questions just about Genesis and what you're doing to stay competitive, what the future of Genesis looks like, all of that. So. Now we're going to dive into these questions, and uh, let's open with, you know, what's the current state of cloud mining today? Um, I think that cloud mining plays um, uh, the most important role as never before in the industry, and um, and and I think that puts a lot of responsibility uh, on us as the leading player. Why that has such an important uh, um, influence is. Because unfortunately, uh, in Bitcoin, but also on the other proof of work uh, uh, blockchains, um, there is an innate driver for centralization. And this innate driver comes because large scale operations always have the economical advantage of economy of scale and um, of other uh, factors that make them more favorable and more economical. Uh, then the from Satoshi ideal scenario of uh, home of decentralized home miners. It is very unfortunate, um, but it is the fact that people are just doing much better if they are uh, getting together or if they are um, uh, building large scale facilities uh, and run them rather than doing it uh, at home. And this uh, has come to the fact that, I mean, I think it's not uh, a surprising fact. Um, a lot of people know that uh, Bitcoin in the end uh, and a lot of other proof of work uh, blockchains uh, are quite centralized uh, by large scale um, enterprises that are building these large scale uh, facilities and have majority uh, of, of, uh, of the computing power and the home miners basically have no chance to operate because they they have a fundamental disadvantage over the large-scale operators so um, now the interesting part of that uh, and what I want to say with that is that the only way of going against this this, uh, this innate centralization is to also go along and make and build large-scale facilities but then take the computing power and distribute it to the masses again. And that in the end is what cloud mining does. And that's also why we are doing that um, uh, because we want to give everyone the chance to participate and we want to give everyone the, the economical advantages of a large scale operator. And um, I think if you look at that, I think cloud mining will particularly now going forward as people are realizing that uh, will play a, a more and more uh, important role. And we are putting this fact, which we, will which we are calling uh, uh, trustless cloud mining, on a very high priority for us. So, um, so because trustless cloud mining in a way, because it's not only done if you would um, 
what, do what we are doing now. Um, I think what we're doing now is, is good and we're decentralizing, but critics would, would say now, in the end, we have the control of the machines um, and uh, the customers don't have the con control over the machines. So for example, in the end, it's also a centralized setup. But um, we want to now go one step further and want to make, as, as I mentioned, uh, um, want to go towards trustless cloud mining. And that would mean that we are making a creating a setup where we, even as the operators, don't have the control of the machines, and the control will be uh, done. Uh, will will will, will uh, the people who our customers um, uh, will in the end have the control uh, of the machines? And uh, I think if we can achieve that, and we are really putting a lot of effort into this, that would be a major um, uh, a major advantage for the whole industry. Uh, for us and, and for the whole for the whole industry and and then um, cloud mining will I think um, will will uh, play as as it did in the past will will be a fundamental uh, driver for the whole uh, ecosystem and people and only people um, can can mine economically by doing cloud mining and um, and uh, yeah and the whole mining will unfortunately. We have to face it. Will be, uh, will be, will be, uh, to the largest extent gone, which is already the case, right? And one of the big questions on that note is, what is Genesis doing to stay competitive? So obviously, four years ago, you know, the competition was people in their basements, you know, trying to mine from home. Now there's a lot of big, big players in the industry. How is Genesis going to compete with all of these big companies that are in the industry? and all the big companies that are going to come into the industry? Well, I think um, to understand or what what uh, is, is happening on, on our side is uh, important to also see behind uh, the front or behind the curtain, basically. I mean, it's really incredible. Of, uh, I could have never believed that uh, we could have been able to do, to, to really uh, launch uh, such large scale operations and particularly in such a, a short amount of time and uh, the to answer the question the most important thing for Genesis mining um, as it wants to uh, or, or as it is a, a fundamental driver for the whole uh, blockchain industry is to stay ahead of the curve and uh, that means that um, we have uh, put a lot of uh, uh, a lot of resources and, and money into research and development uh, to always give our customers the possibility to have the newest technology and to, to, to actually and to also stay ahead of the curve. And, um, and this, if you look back, I mean, we're now, um, it, we're st we started 2013 and um, we have gone through so many ups and downs and really we're in, in it for the beginning, from, from the beginning of the whole industry. Uh, by 2013, um, there were the first bigger um, companies formed, uh, and uh, and it was only Bitcoin by then. Uh, blockchain was not even a, a, a big word. Um, blockchain came very popular right now, um, and the other blockchains like Ethereum, etc., weren't even existing by that time. So um, in, within that time, we have really um, seen a lot of things, and we have learned a lot of things. We've made mistakes. That we that we that improved ourselves in the end, and uh, that's where we are, where we are very of. And the most important thing for us is to keep uh, expanding our operations, keep the to, uh, the keep to advance um, the um, technologies, and um, and of course improve also uh, every every aspect of, of customer service, of of user interface, uh, and, and and user handling. Uh, on the cloud side, and um, I think uh, uh, this is, of course, a challenge. Uh, but I think that um, given what we have done and uh, what we have achieved in the in the years, yeah, we can in the end be uh, very proud of and uh, and um, and uh, continue to do that. So, on that note of the competitive landscape, we had probably fifty or sixty questions specifically related to Radiant Technology. 
Could you explain at a high level exactly what Radiant is, where that came from, and why it's more just effective or possibly more effective than the other solutions that you've had in the past? Yeah, I mentioned it um, before uh, uh, briefly. Um, in the end, I think uh, Radiant is a kind of uh, uh, is 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 all the the the, re the, the innovation and, and all the improvements that we have made over over and, and learned over over the last uh, longer period of time, um, and catalyze that into one uh, new uh, technology, uh, which is which is Radiant and. Um, um, and based on that, I think now we just offered uh, from the five-year uh, radiant that we started, we we, are, we, we, we offer now a two two option, a two-year option, which is, is a very uh, interesting uh, one. And we keep on building now on uh, on this technology. And uh, yeah, I mean, um, we follow our passion to really optimize every single element in this mining process. And the mining process is a very complex and a complicated one. It goes from making chips on the one hand to making the, the, the machines, designing the machines in a very optimal way, um, going uh, towards looking at the data centers. How is a data center set up? Uh, how can you um, position it or structure it so that you have the best, best benefit for the best pooling um, and the highest performance? Uh, from that to, for example, the maintenance. Um, Genesis Hive is a, is a big project uh, for us uh, internally that helps us to optimize the farms and, the, and that helps our uh, engineers to, um, to use Genesis Hive. And we only need a few engineers to run a larger, amount, a larger uh, facility. And uh, um, so from the monitoring um, uh, perspective, from the mo monitoring, uh, so software monitoring side, um, it goes further to finding more uh, places in the world with with a lot of capacity, power capacity, uh, uh, scalable capacity, and of course also very low cost electricity. Um, that's where we what we're doing since uh, five years now, and uh, it's phenomenal in which places in the world we are ending up to to, to deploy um, our our mining facilities, um, and all in that packed together. This is basically uh, all the optimizations in each of these components. This is what uh, what makes radio. And this one just came into our email after your comment about there's a lot going on behind the curtain. What is the future of Genesis mining, and what's you know what's it look like in the upcoming years? Well, um, so Genesis mining, and particularly also the Genesis Group. Um, uh, on the, has grown a, a lot. On the group side, for example, we have a lot of um, uh, a lot of uh, companies that are uh, in addition to the fundamental um, blockchain infrastructure, which Genesis Mining does. So on the group side, we have, for example, uh, things like an uh, an exchange, um, a cryptocurrency exchange, DQR. We have um, uh, we have like uh, um, so other services. We have a, a fund, for example, one of the first blockchain infrastructure funds, um, Logos. Uh, we have a, there's a consultancy company, uh, and there's um, uh, also, which I think extremely remarkable. We have put a lot of efforts and resources in high performance computing. So um, we're, we are very proud of uh, uh, Genesis of the Genesis Cloud which basically um, makes use of our know-how and capabilities in delivering all these efficient data centers and delivers, um, as Genesis Mining does, uh, blockchain uh, for, for the masses. Genesis Cloud provides high-performance computing for the masses. And that includes uh, um, general um, scientific computations, uh, et cetera, but also, very importantly, AI, which I think is a remarkable revolution, too. So uh, we're able to power all the AI innovations with the Genesis Cloud, and um, and and a lot more. I mean, the the world needs more computing power, and um, and uh, I think we uh, we are good at um, of, at building data centers, lo low cost data centers. That uh, of course, the, the, our main base is 
to do it for blockchain, but uh, we are also quite uh, good and can extend that to high uh, performance computing. So that's on the Genesis group side. And on the Genesis mining side, it's uh, particularly uh, interesting because I'm very eager. I think uh, I, I haven't spoken, we, have, we haven't spoken about it much in the public, but we are shortly before now uh, launching the Genesis wallet, um, which will offer our users the, a very more, mer, very much more convenient um, possibility to receive uh, the payouts um, uh, and also to hold the coins um, in the wallet and also change cryptocurrencies uh, that they mined, but also, of course, that they it's, it's, it can also be used uh, independent of mining, but that gives the people the possibility to change, for example, Bitcoin to Litecoin or to others. And uh, there will be additional uh, services, like for example, a debit card um, uh, solution, uh, uh, which I think is remarkable. Like for example, some a miner can then take, for example, the, um, the mined uh, coins and then buy every day a coffee with it, uh, with, a, with, a, with a, a Bitcoin debit or credit card. So these are services of the Genesis wallet, which is coming up. And um, uh, yeah, and besides that, uh, of course, um, Genesis Mining will keep on innovating. And uh, uh, I think we know now there's so many other companies now that you rightfully said have uh, come with, uh, with the flood of new people and new, new, new businesses. Um, but I think what um, makes us strong is that, yeah, we, we have, uh, we were the first, we are the biggest, and um, we um, we were able to, to 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 show that we we are we are trustworthy and that we're fulfilling all of our services throughout uh, throughout all of our five years of operations. And um, and I thank every customer for that support because this is the only reason why we have grown so much. And um, there's a lot of exciting things um, uh, that are now uh, coming. Ahead. Marco, one one question here, getting away from Genesis, getting away from mining in general. Let's talk about the blockchain industry. You, know, you guys have been in it, obviously, now for a long time. Are you still as bullish as ever on blockchain? And what do you think is going to happen in the blockchain industry in the next, you know, let's say, three to five years? Very, uh, very good question. Um, so I think that what we have seen, I, I was talking previously about it, particularly in the last year, was uh, an overdose, I would say, um, from, uh, for, the, for the industry. Um, and that have that led to a lot of questionable use cases, people investing, for, uh, uh, for example, in ICOs, they lost, on average, I think an ICO investor lost 90% of their investment um, uh, because it was based out of ideas and things that were not that were partially not not really real and uh, or basically that were not capable of of, of, of delivering in the end. Um, uh, but this should not distract all of us to uh, now come to, to the conclusion that uh, blockchain is not as uh, has not the high potential as everyone thought at before. I think it's contrary. I think what we are seeing, and particularly, I'm always very proud. For example, going on the on the major um, uh, conferences, for example, uh, yeah, um, Bitcoin, Ethereum, or uh, the major um, uh, blockchain conferences, because you are seeing at these places how many passionate people and how many uh, developers come together from all over the world that want to contribute and develop their uh, and, and develop their apps on top of, of blockchain and uh, and um, and yeah and go forward and uh, and contribute uh, to the network and uh, and that fuels the innovation and um, I there's a few very interesting um, use cases that have already been uh, been now proven I think uh, uh, in in the space. Um, uh, for blockchain, uh, one for example is I think the uh, the, the ability to raise um, money in a very free and and um, an open way via ICOs. Of course, a lot of ICOs were not maybe that 
uh, promising, but the ability, the, the, the possibility is now out. And uh, yeah, uh, that I think was a, is, a, is a strong use case that is already proven. Bitcoin as a store of value, as a, as a potential currency, is a great one too. Um, and I have uh, seen a lot of big corporates, really on a corporate level, blockchain is definitely in the mind of the people. And there is significant uh, um, monetary uh, incentives and monetary resources pushed along that direction. Because people are just uh, understand now that blockchain technology can um, reduce uh, friction in, uh, and make, make systems more efficient. Blockchain can overcome unnecessary hurdles and boundaries. Um, blockchain can go for transparency where there is, uh, un where, where, there is uh, where, where there is unknown in, uh, components uh, in system. It can, it can just make the world a more uh, equal and a more open and, um, and, and uh, rightful place. I mean, everywhere where there is trust, this or in a lot of systems where there is trust you can knock out this element of trust and the element of trust is something that is uh that has proven in the history uh to be um unreliable in a lot of ways we have we have seen financial crises uh we have seen governments uh, that um were not able to to uh to uh, um to uh, how can i say to run a, uh, or that had wrong intentions, were too selfish, and in the end, uh, were were just um, uh, acting in their favor rather than for the for the for the country itself. And all of these components um, can be addressed with blockchain technology. And that's why I have no doubt. I wake up in the morning, and I'm really um, happy that we're in the space. And not only that we're in the space, but that we are a fundamental core element and and um, participate in the backbone of this whole uh, industry. All right, and I think that's all the questions we're gonna ask for today. So Marco, I'll turn over to you, let you uh, have any final words and then just wrap things up and then we're all set. Sure, so I think maybe a, um, a closing um, uh, remark from from my side, uh, it has all been from, if you look really throughout uh, Genesis Mining internally, it's, uh, it has been so far an incredible um, five years of operation. And um, uh, it started from a small dorm um, where, where everything, uh, all the plans were, were made and the initial step stones were made out to now an, an enterprise that uh, is completely international and distributed all over the world and has more than 2 million customers. And, uh, and um, I mean, we are all as passionate as we are from the beginning on, and um, we are very happy to, to be in, our, in the position where we are. And most of all, we are very extremely appreciative to have the customers and the support of all of our customers to to make something like that happen. And uh, I see it just every time when there's now a new company that is getting one that wants to do similar things uh, than us or, or, or wants to generally go into to mining. Nearly all of those companies have no chance or are, are failing in, in even a short amount of time. And the reason for that is because it is a very competitive market. and. Um, uh, and the, the entry hurdles are, are significantly high by now to that. And um, we are in our position because we have started at that early and we have all of the, the, the support of our customers. And having said that, I really appreciate uh, everybody for all of their support. We are doing everything uh, possible to always deliver the best technology to all of you and make mining the most open uh, space so that everybody can participate. Thank you. All right, thank you, Marco. Sure, John. I hope this um, was uh, this uh, could, I, I could clarify some some open questions. <laughs>